Hello, America, and welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Today, I am just taking calls and listening to you. I want you to feel heard by the nation, and I really want to know what's on your mind, how we can help. The number is 888-727-BECK, 888-727-BECK. Now, I am going to take one other phone call because what happened with Disney this week is insanity. And I've had this gentleman on before, but I've never introduced him other than Politizoid, uh, a uh, banner that he has been using to release all of his information. Well, he said he wants to come out of the closet. So I'm not going to out him as a former Disney employee and name him. I'll let him do that if he still wants to. And he'll tell us what's really going on in Disney. We do that in 60 seconds. Uh, hmm. Former Disney artist, uh, founder and creative director of Politizoid. If you don't know what Politizoid is, yes, you do. Uh, about, I think, about a year ago. I've lost track of time. A year ago, two years ago, um, he came out with a, um, with a video of It's a Small World. Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to It's a Woke World. And you're going into It's a Small World. The Communist Party in cooperation with the Communist Party paying for this. Reimagine tomorrow. And the animation, the animation is tremendous. The production value is tremendous. And it's done by a former Disney artist. And he's on with us now. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. Good morning, Glenn. It's good to talk to you. I have heard that you are coming out of the closet. Uh, and uh, I don't want to out you. Is that true? Uh, yes, I am going to tell you that I identify as Bob Arvin. Bob Arvin. Uh, well, that doesn't, just because you identify as Bob Arvin doesn't make you Bob Arvin, but I, I digress. Well, my parents made me Bob Arvin. So, <laughs> um, so Bob, you have, you have been out of Disney and, uh, you have been making these things that go really against what Disney is doing. Uh, and you've, you've not attached your name. Why? Well, honestly, when I started about 12 years ago, I, I did put my name on there and I w- was uh, doing some publicity on it. Uh, I always just branded it as politizoid and, uh, never really took that on as my own, you know, moniker, but, mm-hmm. uh, um, as things progressed, I mean, I, I took a little bit of a break because we had funding during the 2010 uh, election cycle that lasted you know, about a year and a half. And after that, we weren't able to get additional funding. So I went back to just doing client work and the world changed. And uh, especially uh, when I jumped out, uh, you know, during the Trump administration and, and did the, the piece Shift Hits the Fan. Once, yeah, once so great. Shared by Donald Trump. Shift uh, Hits the People fan. get nas- nasty. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. So um, tell us what's going on. How long has Disney been like this? Uh, you know, the, the, the half the characters need to be LGBTQIA. They're leaving out the two plus. Um, by the end of the year, and it does not seem like a tolerant place if you disagree with that as your mission. No, I, it's really kind of changed over the last decade or so. Um, I mean, it's been over 20 years since I was there, but I, I know other people that stayed with the company. And actually, through the World, World video and my last appearance on your show, um, you know, a lot of Disney artists reached out to me. Uh, really? So just to say thank you. Others uh, I'm working with now on projects. Um, mm. And, uh, you know, so I've been able to get a little more of a line on, on kind of what, what, how this developed. 
I, I really think the turning point was the passing of Roy E. Disney, who was yes. Walt's nephew in 2009. And uh, I had heard a, a rumor when I was at Disney in, in uh, the late 90s um, that there was a film in development called Wildlife. And uh, a few of the artists that I reached out to yesterday when I knew I was going to be on your show were able to confirm what I had heard. Uh, and, and this film, it was going to be one of the first, you know, this was only a couple of years after Toy Story, the first one came out. Right. And uh, so feature animation was wanting to do CG character animation. Um, and they were developing this film and they, uh, I mean, they probably poured millions of dollars into it and they did a test clip and it had some homoerotic jokes in it. And uh, Roy Disney was watching the screening. And from what I understand, he stood up in the screening room, told the projectionist to turn the projector off. And he announced, he says, we do not make films like this. Uh, and he shut it down. And that was that. Mm. And, uh, but I think in the, since he passed and then also, you know, as the politics have changed in our nation, I think that um, you know, I guess to put it in, you know, a not so savory term, there were sleeper cells of these kind of militant activists within the company that have been activated now and, and they're emboldened and they're using the smear campaign against the bill in Florida, um, to push their agenda. And really it's kind of like an internal hostile takeover of Disney is what's happening right now. So it used to be, uh, that, you know, people like me would go to work for Disney uh, because you're such a huge fan. And I'd sweep the street if I had to because I was so in awe of what Walt had done and uh, and the spirit of the place that it was a just a happy place to be where you could leave the world behind. That's not it anymore. Um, wh how, what is the percentage, do you think? How many? Are, is is the the majority of the employees on this bandwagon, or are just the other employees just too afraid to say anything? I think it's the latter. Uh, I've spoken to several that still work for the company in one capacity or another, and they are afraid to uh, deviate in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I mean, there's you know some hardcore conservatives that I know that work there that. HR will quiz them on gender pronouns, and if they don't say the prescribed answers, uh, you know, you're probably not going to continue working there. So uh, it's entirely possible that it's, you know, that the Disney company is like a, a, a you know, exactly like what's happening in our own country. It's like a small active minority is steering the ship, and the majority are afraid to speak out or only now just kind of waking up to what's going on and trying to figure out what can be done. We're talking to Bob Arvin, uh, former Disney artist and founder and creative director of Politizoid, uh, which you've probably seen many of, of these um, digitized cartoons and they're fantastic um, uh, and, and rare because they're done with um, real skill uh, and they're, they kind of hold up the right point of view, if you will. Uh, and you just don't see that very often. Um, Bob, the, um, the impact on our society, I mean, right now we're fighting this stuff in our schools, but I think Disney will have a much bigger impact than schools will even have. And I don't see parents standing up to Disney like they're standing up to the, uh, to the school boards. Well, I think before people kind of had, you know, an inkling that some of this might have been going on, but it was still kind of hidden. And uh, so you were still willing to subscribe to Disney Plus and go to the parks and, uh, uh, and you know, and still pretend like you're going to Walt, Walt's Park from the past. Um, but now it's like, you know, with the footage that just came out this week, there's yeah. no doubt about the agenda and what's going on. And I, I don't, it's those people in the, the footage are living in a bubble. It's like, they're all just kind of, you know, yeah. in a little circle 
saying all the same things, encouraging each other to do and say the same things. And they don't know their core audience. They are abandoning their core audience in favor of this agenda. And what they're going to do, it. They, they will, if they don't destroy it, it will be damaged for a generation. Um, it's, and, it, and it saddens me to say that. I mean, you know, I, I was an annual pass holder for years. Yeah, I mean, so when was I first I. got here, uh, I would go down to the park just to listen to the piano player on Main Street yeah. you know, while everybody else was in line to yeah. <laughs> ride the rides. But yeah. now, you know, it's like Disney doesn't even want the Southern California residents because they can, you know, they can really bilk the, the tourists coming from out of town for thousands of dollars, whereas, you know, those of us in Southern California are like, where's our discount? And they're like, discount? Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, I will tell you that for a long time, you know, you would put up with it and, you know, you'd put up because it was, it seemed like it just became all about the money. Uh, and it was. Uh, and that's what's happening again. It's about the money. They just don't want any trouble. And, uh, you know, the people that they've always wanted at the park are not the angry militants. It is just the average family. Uh, and I'm, I'm hoping that this is a line um, that the families will draw. We've always had Disney. I mean, it's gotten much more dicey in the last 10 to 15 years. But this is now 50% of everything they make is going to be LGBTQ. Um, that's a remarkable uh, statement for them to make and come out with. Uh, and hopefully people will say, I, you know what? I, I don't want you teaching my kids anything. I, want you, I just want sweet stories, okay? Preserve my children's innocence, please. Stop with jamming this down their throat. And I don't care what it is. I wouldn't want them talking about, you know, a conservative, hey, everybody, you got to go to this church. I wouldn't want that either. Leave my children alone, Disney. Hopefully, people will see it that way, but I don't know if they will. Well, I, I think people are coming to the realization that this is another part of the attack on the American family. And, you know, with, without the family intact, um, you know, we, we start to crumble as a people, as yeah. a culture, as a nation. Yeah. And, you know, they didn't go after Warner Brothers. They didn't go after Universal. They didn't go after Sony. They went after Disney. Of course. Because they knew that that was the one and only studio in Hollywood that upheld traditional American values and made family entertainment. Yep. And they know if you capture the kids, you've got it. You win. You win. Thank you so much, Bob. I appreciate everything that you do. If you uh, if you want to see his uh, if you want to see his latest, it's uh, it's pretty good. You can find it at politizoid.com. Politizoid.com. Bob, thank you. Thank you, Glenn. You bet. Bye bye.